We are talking about the normal distribution and in this video we're actually talking about how to find the inverse norm. Basically what we're going to be doing is working backwards. When we did the problems on normal distribution we were told basically an x value that was on our horizontal axis and our job was to figure out the area either above or below. So for example, in this case, our job was to figure out the area that I've shaded in red. What we're doing this time around with the inverse norm is that we are going to be given the area. Okay, so if I tell you that the area of the shaded region is 0.28, then our job is to figure out at what value of x is that going to be true. Depending on the calculator that you're using, you are going to either have the choice to decide whether you are left tailed or right tail. But there are some TI-84s, I know for sure there are some TI-84s that do not have that option of left tail, right tail. And so getting to know your calculator is very important because in the situation where your calculator doesn't ask you whether it's right tail or left tail, then that means your calculator most likely only works left tail. So what does that mean? That means that right now, if I have shaded in red an area of 0.28, to figure out the part that's not shaded, I'm going to have to take 1 and subtract 0.28. And so that means if 28% is shaded in red, that would mean 72% is not shaded in red. Or what I basically am doing is taking 1, because remember the area under the entire curve is 1, and subtracting 0.28, so the part that's not shaded is 0.72. So this is something that we're going to have to keep in mind as we go through the examples today. But the idea is in inverse norm problems, we know the area and we basically have to figure out at what value on this horizontal axis is that going to be correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Let's start with example number one. It says if x is normally distributed, Remember that our first number here is the mean, and then this is my standard deviation. This is what's called the standard normal distribution, when you have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. It says find the value of a for which the probability of x less than or equal to a is equal to 0.88. One of the very first things that I recommend that you do is actually create a graph. So I'm going to go ahead and create a bell-shaped curve, and I know that the mean is zero and I want to figure out for which value of a is the probability of x being less than or equal to a equal to 0.88. All right so now here's the thing either a is on the left side of the mean or on the right side of the mean. I have to determine where I'm going to place it. This says the probability of x less than or equal to which means that I'm going to be shading to the left. So if I shade to the left, I would be shading about 88%, 0.88, which is more than half. So the question becomes, if I make A on the left of the mean and I shade to the left, and remember we're shading to the left because the problem says less than or equal to, does that look like that represents 0.88? Of the probability under the curve and the answer is no because right now that's less than half so it definitely cannot be 0.88 if instead I say that I'm gonna put a on the right hand side somewhere I don't know exactly where I'm trying to figure out what that value of a is and I shade everything to the left now does this look like this area in red is 0.88 and the answer is yes because it's more than half so that's important because it's going to help you get a visual of what it is that you're doing. Also, if you are preparing for an exam like the IB exam, you're going to get partial points for showing your work. And that diagram would count as your work. So remember the A is not going to be to the left of the mean. It would actually be to the right of the mean. Okay, so with that being said, all that's left to do is to actually find the answer. So to find the answer, we're going to go to second vars because this is a type of distribution. And this time we're going to choose option three, which is inverse norm. The calculator is going to ask me for the area. It's going to ask me for the mean. 
and the standard deviation. Then your calculator will either ask you whether it's left tail or right tail. If your calculator does not ask you about whether it's left tail or right tail, then we have to assume that your calculator probably only works left tail. In this case, it's not a problem because I am shading everything to the left, so it doesn't matter. Those of you who have the option, go ahead and press left, and those of you who don't, it's probably going to do left anyway. So here we have our calculator. We're going to go to second bars. We're going to go down to option number three, inverse norm. Notice we are being asked to input the area, which is 0.88. The mean is zero. The standard deviation is one. And it does ask me which tail it is. Is it left tail, center, or right? So I'm going to go ahead and use left tail. I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to go down, press enter for paste, press enter again, and I get 1.17 roughly is my answer. So this means that my value of A is 1.17. And because this is the standard normal distribution where I have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, that should kind of make sense because from here to the left, we know that's gonna be already 50%. And then within one standard deviation, which is about this part right here, according to the empirical rule, it's gonna be half of 68. So that's gonna be another 0.34. So already, if I were to add 0.5 and 0.34, I get 0.84. So notice how closely that estimate is to the correct answer, which is 0.88 at 1.17. Okay, so let's head on down to example number two. And example number two, I am still dealing with the standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. It says find the value of B for which the probability of X greater than or equal to B is equal to 0.65. So something that's important for us to understand is the fact that now we're going to be shading to the right. And when we shade to the right, it's going to be more than half. So I'm going to draw my diagram. It's not a very pretty normal curve, but it'll do. So then here is my mean. Remember that you have options, okay? And it's okay for you to kind of test your options lightly with a pencil maybe, where if I put B here to the left and I shade to the right, remember we're shading to the right because it's greater than or equal to, does that make sense for that to be 0.65? And right now it's like, yeah, actually it does because it's more than half. If instead I would have thought that I'm going to put the B on the right-hand side, and I ask myself, okay, if the B is here and I were to shade to the right, does that look like it's 0.65? And the answer is no, because what's shaded in red right now, it's less than half. So that's kind of the way you distinguish between where you should be putting this value. So now we know that B is going to be somewhere to the left. And 0.65 is not that far off from 0.5, so I'm actually not going to put it all the way to the tippy end. I'm going to put it closer to the mean. And I'm going to shade everything to the right, and so everything that I've shaded in red, that represents an area of 0.65. So here is where our calculators might do this differently, and you have to check to see which calculator you are working with. Just like before, we are going to go to second bars. And we're going to choose option three, which is inverse norm. But this time around, it depends on your calculator. It's going to ask you for the area, the mean, standard deviation, and left tail, right tail. For those of us who have the option of left or right, you obviously are going to choose right. So my calculator has that option. So my area is going to be 0.65. My mean is zero. My standard deviation is one. And then I'm going to choose right tail. But for those of you who don't have the left tail, right tail option, you're going to have to think a little bit. If what's shaded in red is 0.65, then the part that's not shaded is 1 minus 0.65, which is 0.35. So those of you whose calculators only work to the left, instead of putting the area as 0.65, you're going to put the area in as 0.35 with a mean of zero standard deviation of 1. That's only if you don't have the choice about left tail, right tail. I'm going to go to second bars, option three, inverse norm. I'm going to put 0.65, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And in this case, it's right tail. Press enter, go down, 
press enter to paste, enter again for your answer. So the answer is negative 0.385. Let's see what happens if I go second vars option three inverse norm and put 0.35, but this time going the opposite direction left, which again, those of you who don't have the option, most likely your calculator is only doing left. And if I press enter, notice I'm at exactly the same answer, negative 0.385. And the idea is, all you want to know is, what is this value where exactly B is? And so what you know is that if I shade to the right, it covers an area of 0.65. If I shade to the left, it covers an area of 0.35. Doesn't matter really, but what you get is exactly where does that B value occur. Okay, so let's move on over to example number three. In example number three, it says if x is normally distributed, in this case, the mean is five, the standard deviation is 0 0.6. Find the value of c for which the probability of x greater than or equal to c is equal to 0 0.37. Once again, when I read the problem, I know that this means because it is greater than or equal to c, that I'm going to be shading to the right. Also, the amount that I'm gonna be shading to the right is less than half. So now that we're getting better, with our diagram understandings, hopefully you know this is going to be the mean 5, and I'm going to put C to the right because when I shade right, this area is going to be 0.37. So once again, you're going to go to second vars, option 3, inverse norm. The area that I'm going to put is 0.37. The mean is 5, standard deviation is 0.6 and I'm going to choose the right tail. For those of you who don't have the option of left tail, right tail, you're going to have to figure out one minus 0.37 is equal to 0.63. So those of you who don't have the option, your area is gonna be 0.63. The mean is five, the standard deviation is 0.6. And of course, remember your calculator is working left tail. So let's go ahead and head on over to the calculator. So second vars option three, the area that we're looking for is 0.37, the mean is five, standard deviation is 0.6, and this is for my right tail. So I'm gonna press enter, press enter for pace, press enter again. So 5.199, which is approximately 5.20 for those of you who have to round to three significant figures. So this is about 5.20. If I were to do second vars, option three, and use the left area of 0.63, same mean of five, center deviation is 0.6, but this time to the left, I press paste, I press enter, and you're going to get exactly the same answer, 5.199. So again, this is approximately 5.20 to three significant figures. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do example number four. In this case, it says X is normally distributed. The mean is 17, standard deviation is 2.2. Find the values of D and E for which the probability that X is less than or equal to D is 0.1, and the probability that D is less than or equal to X less than or equal to E is 0.72. All right, once again, a diagram is going to help us organize our thoughts. Here in the center is the mean. It says, first let's deal with D. Less than or equal to tells me I'm going to shade left. And I'm shading 0.1, which is actually 10%. So here, somewhere here is D. When I shade left, then that area that I'm shading is only 0.1. Okay, so it's definitely less than half. In terms of going to the calculator, second bars, option three, inverse norm, then you're going to put the area as 0.1. The mean is 17. The standard deviation is 2.2. And that's for everyone because in this case, it is left tail. So in our calculator, we go second bars, option three, which is inverse norm. In this particular case, my area was 0.1. My mean is 17. My standard deviation is 2.2. This is left tail. Oops, that's not 2.2, that's 2.5. 2.2, it's left tail. I press paste, enter. 
And so my answer is 14.18, so approximately 14.2. So the value of D is approximately 14.2, if I round to three significant figures. The next part of the problem says that the area between D and E, which is another unknown value, is 0 0.72. 0 0.72 is more than half. So E has to be somewhere around here. And between D and E, this area is going to be 0.72, okay? This area in red, this shading is not very pretty. Okay, so this is going to be 0.72 right here. And one of the things that you have to remember is I'm just trying to figure out what is this value of E right here. So if in red I have 0.72, and from D to negative infinity over here is 0.1. That means that in general, if I were to take a look at this, from where E is, the entire area, the entire thing to the left of E is going to be 0.82. And that's because 0.72 plus 0.1 is 0.82. So when I go to find this on my calculator, my area is going to be 0.82, my mean is 17, my standard deviation is 2.2, and of course this is left tail. Second bars, option 3, inverse norm, the area is 0.82, the mean is 17, standard deviation is 2.2, left tail, press paste, and so the answer is 19.0. Okay, last but not least, in a certain year, Nando estimates that 5% of his lambs have not reached the required mass for market. The mean mass of the lambs this year is 38 kilograms and the standard deviation is 2.85 kilograms. What is the minimum mass requirements for lambs to be sent to market this year? So I'm going to draw my normal curve. In the center, I have the mean. The mean is 38. And then it says he estimates that 5% of his lambs have not reached the required mass. What is the minimum mass to be sent to market? So that means that 5% have not reached the required mass. 5% is going to be in the lowest end. Okay, so those that are in the lowest end, I'm going to go ahead and just call this A. So here to the left, then I know that this is 5%, which is 0.05. And then that's going to give me the weight, the cutoff, basically, for the ones that don't make it. So anything beyond that, they should be able to make it. So in the calculator, I'm going to go to second bars, option three, inverse norm. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the area as 0 0.05. The mean is going to be 38 with a standard deviation of 2.85. And this is left tail. Second vars, option three inverse norm. Our area in this case is 0 0.05. Our mean is going to be 38. The standard deviation is 2.85. It is left tail. Press space and then enter. So 33.3. .3. So that means that 33.3 kilograms is going to be the cutoff. Anything greater than that, they're going to be able to get sent to the market. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.